My wife and I were in Israel two weeks ago for the bris of a new grandson. The event was an unforgettable life experience, thank God. And it was made that much more special by the presence of four generations in my family. My father, me, my son, and my new grandson. Which brings us to this week's Torah portion. The Jews have completed the exodus. They're safe now in God's protective embrace. They've crossed the sea and the Egyptian army has drowned. Two Torah portions ago at the beginning of Parsha's bow, Moshe had been told by God the following, come to Paro because I've hardened his heart and the hearts of his servants so that I could place my signs in their midst so that you can relate in the ears of your sons and grandsons how I made a mockery of the Egyptians and placed my signs amongst them so that you'll know that I'm God. Who was the first Jew to fill that role, the role of storyteller, the role that all Jewish parents occupied during the Passover Seder and throughout the year, telling our sons and grandsons and daughters and granddaughters about the Exodus? Interestingly, and ironically, it was Moshe. Because we see at the beginning of this week's Torah portion, Moshe's father-in-law, Yisro, shows up in the wilderness. He brings along his daughter, Moshe's wife, Zipporah, and Moshe's sons. Moshe's sons were not in Egypt during the plagues. They weren't there for the exodus. They were back in Midian. So Moshe's now going to have to tell them all about the signs and wonders that God placed amidst the Egyptians. And that's tough for him and for us. Because if you undersell the story, kids won't be interested. But if you oversell it and get too preachy, they'll tune you out. So how do you do it? God gave Moshe a hint. In the original command, he didn't say, so that you'll be able to relate in the ears of your sons and grandsons how I made a mockery of the Egyptians so that they'll know that I'm God. He said, so that you'll know that I'm God. Hinting to Moshe that if you want to teach, you've got to master the subject material. And if you do that properly, you'll increase the belief in God, not only of your sons and grandsons and daughters and granddaughters, but of yourself as well. And Moshe also gave us a hint. In last week's Torah portion, in the beautiful song, Oz Yashir, that he sang with the Jews after they crossed the sea, he tells us in one of the sentences, Zekeli ve'anvehu, this is my God and I will glorify him. Eloke Avi, the God of my father, Varoma menhu, and I will exalt him. Hinting to us that first God has to be your God. You can't go through life with God only the God of your father, only doing things because your parents told you that you're supposed to. You've got to recognize the miracles that God did for you, that got you here. Then you can also recognize the miracles that he did for your parents and for their parents, the cumulative miracles that God had to do in order for you to be here today. But it also works in reverse. Sometimes it's tough for us to see God's hand. We go through difficulties, trials, and tribulations. Then we can rely on the God of our parents, that simple faith, the faith that was imprinted in our psyche when we first began our Jewish education as kids. And then hopefully we'll be able to imprint on the psyche of our children and grandchildren when we and they begin their Jewish education. And we're reminded that we have to spend our lives trying to do a little more, a little more than our parents did, a little more than our grandparents did. They want us to do that. They got us here, and they want us to go further. And we want our children to go further in glorifying God's name. But it's difficult, because the further away we get from the Exodus and from the giving of the Torah, the tougher it is, the greater the temptations. Think about it. What temptations did I have when I was a young man? Charlie's Angels? Now? Young kids have more temptation in their pocket, in their smartphones, more distractions than we could have ever imagined. The competition for their attention, trying to draw their attention away from that towards God, is incredibly intense. But if you succeed, the results are unbelievable. The dreaded generation gap completely disappears. A grandfather can study the same total portion with a grandson, with the same commentators, the same Rashi. They can grapple over and argue over the same folio in the Talmud, live and breathe the same issues. They may see it from different perspectives, but they're all together looking at that same living document. And that is, and always has been, the key to Jewish continuity.